So a lot of people admire um, people when they see them out, out there, like a very good looking person, skinny, or maybe not too overweight. A lot of people desire to achieve a particular um, weight or they have a particular body goal. Let me put it that way. A lot of us use that term a lot. This is my body goal or this is what I want to achieve. So, but your destiny is actually really in your hands. You have to be able to wise up and take that decision to, you know, make the move to be that person you want to be. So my guest is going to talk about, you know, how to do all of these things that you want to do to achieve the desired, you know, weight goal that you want. Her name is Chioma, Dr. Chioma Miracle. She's a clinical, she's a clinical dietitian and a trained nutritionist. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I hope I didn't, I pronounced it well. Miracle. Well, yes, Miracle Chomayas. Mm -hmm. Thank Miracle. you. <laughs> Clinical nutritionist and a registered dietitian. And you've been doing this, you've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, about um, 15 years. Okay, 15 yes, years. Yes. Uh, I know your first child is already in the, in the university. <laughs> yes, so about to. about to go into the university. <laughs> yes. So uh, not, not too far. So you have a lot of wealth of experience. Well, in, uh, in I should say so by the grace of God. And we are still experiencing new things every okay. day. We are learning every day and we are still growing every day. All right. So we're talking dieting today. Hmm. Hmm. What is dieting? <laughs> Okay, I'm happy that you first of all started by saying that we all have different destinies. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it means that there is no one size that mm -hmm, fits mm -hmm. all. And um, it's, it's become a common thing to hear people say that they're on a diet mm -hmm. or dieting mm -hmm. and some other person that maybe don't even know what it means also wants to join the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Let's go diet mm -hmm. without even knowing what exactly mm -hmm. that means or what has inspired the other person's decision to diet. To diet. So okay. dieting on its own simply means eating in a regulated manner or in a particular regulated way mm -hmm. to either lose weight mm -hmm. or gain weight. It can also be to prevent or treat an illness. Mm, that so, part is really, really important. Exactly. So for someone that maybe has hypertension mm. or there is family history of hypertension, person can, can go on a diet mm -hmm. to prevent hypertension or to prevent diabetes or at least to delay the onset. Because mm. these are things when they, there is that family predisposition, it means that people in that family are, you know, they have a higher chance of coming down with such illnesses. Yeah, so such is. individuals might decide to go on a diet mm -hmm. in order to prevent that particular medical condition from happening. happening. So people that are on it also may also go on a diet to manage it. You know, so I it's was, not just when you want to lose weight mm, or gain weight. As a follow-up, I was going yes. to actually ask you, like, what should inform a person's um, decision, you know, to go on a diet? Who of course, should, who se should several diet? things can be the reason why people go on a diet. That's why I said by saying mm -hmm. it's really appalling to see some people just go on a diet. And I said, why are you on a diet? Eh, nothing. Perhaps their favorite celebrity tweeted, maybe I'm on this kind of diet. Mm -hmm. And they think, okay, because mm -hmm. she's my favorite ce celebrity, let's go there. Mm -hmm. You know, without having a reason to do so, or without even getting an, that pre information to know, can this work for me? Mm -hmm. Even though Mrs. A did this particular kind of diet and she lost a lot of baby fat, she mm -hmm. lost weight, and then once you see that, you jump in. Mm -hmm. We are all different. There is no one size that fits all. There mm -hmm. is no one particular diet that will work for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it may work for Miss A with the same body type and everything, and it may not work for the other person. We all have different, you know, circumstances and everything. We're all different. All right. Um, you know, there's this thing called... Um the BMI, but, but before I go there, mm. um, the BMI, okay, let's me go there. <laughs> the, body the BMI is, index. yes, the body mass index. It has, it, it does have a role to play with um, um, our body weight and I, I guess one of the reasons why you should, um, you should want to, to diet. I'm trying not to, to to put words <laughs> you know you know hearing from the expert yeah. i want you to tell us more about it but from my own understanding it has to do with um knowing what you actually weigh to know whether you're actually underweight or or overweight okay i'll i'll let me talk i'll talk briefly about the bmi it simply means body mass index It's one of the indicators of uh, knowing whether somebody's overweight mm -hmm. whether you're you know underweight whether your weight is you have the right to weight or you are grossly obese. Okay. Obeys, okay? Before, we go, before, we go, before we go deep into it, we, we actually have something on the BMI, but 
it's something that people should know, right? Yeah, okay. It's something that like at least everybody should yes, know. Yes, yes, it's an easy thing for everyone. It's, it's all, everyone should be able to do that little calculation, know okay. what your weight is in kilograms, okay. and then divide that by your height in meter square. All right, we'll come back so, and talk more about it. Yeah. But we went out on the street to find out how many people actually, you know, know their, know their BMI, BMI okay. because that's how you know some people don't know they're overweight and they're mm. walking around mm. you know so but that's how you know whether you're underweight or overweight so okay. here's a vox bar put together by capsi on the bmi health is wealth and in your quest to being healthy it is important to ensure you have a good body health based on your age and size ever heard of the word bmi come along with me let's find out from you what the bmi is it has to do with my weight and my no, my height, that kind of thing. My body index, general body index, is it not? Okay, I think I know about the BMI. I know it has to do with uh, weight loss and all that, but how to calculate it, I don't. I know that BMI is body max index, but I don't know how to calculate it. Mm, I know how to calculate it. A body mass index, you mean? Yes, uh, it's used to know the, uh, the correct weight for the correct height. That's what, what it is used for, so that you know when your weight is going out of proportion to your height. It is clear enough that majority of people either know what the BMI is or don't know how to calculate it. It is important that you know what your BMI is and know how to calculate your BMI. I am Joshua Capsi for The Medley Show. <music> It tells you whether you're underweight or overweight and we were talking earlier and you said it's 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 just for adults it has um, um it's not for children yes it's not suitable for children okay. because for children we there is um different ways of calculating for children that are between zero and 12 years there are you know different ways of calculating the expected weight or age and when a child uh, is weighing below or above the expected weight for that age we could either say the child is either underweight or overweight and then from 12 years it's better to use what we call the growth chart okay uh, there are growth chart that we used to you know place a child if uh, the child is overweight oh, no. or underweight but I, for i'm adults, really interested in these children we're going to come back to yes. them but I want I wanted to talk about the adults. From what age to what age? What are you from, expected from, to? From 18 years and above. So we can use the BMI as one of the ways of measures of you know determining who is overweight or underweight mm -hmm. or having the actual the right weight. Although the BMI has its own limitations okay. because when you climb on a scale, uh, you, you just eat and you climb on a scale. Even the weight of the food, the water, mm -hmm. everything we read on the scale. That doesn't mean that that's all part of your weight, mm -hmm. you know. And um, when you climb on the scale, it's not just the fat in your body that is being measured. Mm -hmm. The muscle cells are not are being measured. The fat cells and everything are all being measured. So there are also other means of knowing if mm -hmm. somebody's on weight, like using the body fat percentage, which is even a lot more accurate because weight is not an easy thing to, you know. For everyone to assess, how, do you, how this, do you check that? We can use calipers, and in this period and days of uh, of um, development, there are a lot of machines that you can climb on mm. and can easily pick your your body fat percentage. But traditionally, the calipers are best used to measure body fat percentage. Mm -hmm. So that tells you, out of all this weight that the scale says you have, mm. how much percent of all this weight is fat? Mm. And that is actually what we, what we are more worried about. So you might find someone like a bodybuilder with all the muscles can weigh 120 kilograms on the scale. So mm -hmm. are you going to call that person overweight? Mm. No, because much of the weight is coming from muscles. Muscle mass. Yes, exactly. Mm. So, but for for the general population, for the average person out there, it's nice to at least know what your BMI is. That can help you at least to know if you're getting it right. If you want to go on a diet, should I or should I not? Mm. You know, you can still be on a diet just to maintain a healthy weight. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. so uh, it's just that the concept of dieting has been so overrated that people, most people that are on it, don't even know mm. why they are on it and if they should be on it. And what type they are on, you should be on it. So who is an who is an underweight person? An underweight person is someone that the weight is not um, up to the expected weight for children, the expected weight for age, and for the adults. Mm -hmm. When the person's weight is above, on when the person's BMI after his calculated is above twenty five um, kilogram per meter square. Okay. 
Now, the thing with, with, with the kids, why I wanted us to, to come back to talk about the kids is because I've, I've often heard people say baby fat is what turns to child fat and what turns to uh, maybe <laughs> teenager fat and then an no. adult, you know, no, fat. It's, but it's we do wrong. see kids who, who, who actually look obese. There are kids who are obese. Um, how do we keep tabs on this? Okay, aside from the fact there is, um, there is contribution from hereditary, most children that are obese today from my experience mm. actually happens because of the kind of food the parents give them, mm. the kind of things that they eat, you know. And um, these parents will hide under the fact that their children, they will play, they will grow it. And you see mm. this child growing and at eight mm. years, the child is weighing 80 kilograms at mm. eight years. The child is going to have high blood sugar at mm -hmm. eight years, mm -hmm. and you think it's just baby fat? No, you know. So uh, it's more of uh, issues coming from the kind of things we give them to eat. So now you see, you yes, exactly. Some of them, because it can also be issue of an under functioning of one hormone or the other, growth hormones, mm. maybe excessive or thyroid hormones under functioning. So if a child is overweight and the mother, the parents think that they are getting it right with the child's nutrition, I recommend they should take that child for a real with a pediatrician. Mm. They will know the kind of, you know, test things to check, you know. It's safer to start early. Okay, yes. okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, a little bit back to the BMI um, thing. It, is it, um, what works for us here in Africa? Is it the same thing that, because you know, we have different body structure. Is it the same <laughs> thing? <laughs> we have different body structure. Yes, is it the same for the Chinese man? Is it the same no, for- of course, of course it's not. You know, that is actually where um, people um, capitalize the fact that the BMI has limitations. Okay. Actually, it was not um, developed using our, uh, you know, people, Africans, people in our setting, mm. people with the kind of body mass we have and all that. Mm. That is why I said earlier that BMI has limitations. Mm. So a Chinese man, sorry, China, that is not so tall or not so yeah. broad like the African man, you know, you may not compare my BMI mm. values mm. with him. That is why we have to use other things like the body fat percentage. You know, okay, okay. and other things also, they just you cannot just use a, a telos tape, a measuring tape, and take your waist, mm. your waist measurement, do your hip to waist ratio. There are so many ways to know mm. if your body, or if your weight, or if your size is actually in sync with what it's supposed to be. Okay, without okay. so much relying on the BMI. All right, there's so many diets out there, different mm. types. <laughs> we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that in a bit, but first we're going to take a feature on the different types of diets put together by Kachi. If eating better or losing weight is on your mind these days, there's no shortage of weight loss diets grappling for your attention. And the reality is that most diets, the good and the bad, will help you shed the pounds in the short term. But the difference is in keeping the pounds off. And that relies on having a doable plan that you can stick with for life. Let's review popular diets and the science behind them. The paleo diet claims that you should eat the same foods that your hunter-gatherer ancestors ate before agriculture developed. The paleo diet emphasizes whole foods, lean protein, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and seeds, while discouraging processed foods, sugar, dairy, and grains. The diet seems effective at reducing risk factors for heart disease. Unfortunately, it eliminates whole grains, legumes, and dairy which are healthy and nutritious. Different diets restrict animal products and they have varying health benefits. A vegetarian diet skips meat and focuses more on fruits, veggies, whole grains, and plant-based protein. A step further, a vegan diet restricts all animal products. In addition to eliminating meat, it also eliminates dairy, eggs, and animal-derived products. Some people adopt a flexitarian diet, which focuses on a plant-based diet but allows you to add small amounts of animal products. If you're looking to burn calories in a balanced way, this flexible approach may be a good match for you. Low-carb diets emphasize unlimited amounts of protein and fats while severely limiting your carb intake. Low-carb diets have grown in popularity in recent years, but still remain controversial because they help you lose weight quickly but are not effective in the long term. Of course, 
The Atkins diet was the original low-carb diet, made popular decades ago. Now that keto is on the scene and there's a general carb phobia, you may be thinking again about going on a low-carb diet. The primary aim of the diet is to force your body to use more fats for fuel instead of using carbs as a main source of energy. Atkins and keto differ in that Atkins allows for more protein, whereas keto limits protein severely. Dukan is another low-carb diet that promotes unlimited high-protein foods. Low-carb diets seem to be very effective at reducing dangerous belly fat, which can become lodged around your organs. Low-carb diets tend to reduce your appetite and make you feel less hungry, leading to an automatic reduction in calorie intake and weight loss. Intermittent fasting is an increasingly popular way to lose weight fast, and it seems as if more people are becoming interested in it. It cycles your body between periods of fasting and eating. Rather than restricting the foods you eat, it controls when you eat them. As such, it can be seen as more of an eating pattern than a diet. The most popular ways to do intermittent fasting are the 16-8 method. This involves skipping breakfast and restricting your daily eating period to 8 hours, subsequently fasting for the remaining 16 hours of the day. The eat-stop-eat eat method. This involves 24-hour fasts once or twice per week on non-consecutive days. The 5-2 diet. On two non-consecutive days of the week, you restrict your intake to 500 to 600 calories. You do not restrict intake on the five remaining days. The warrior diet. Eat small amounts of raw fruits and vegetables during the day and one huge meal at night. Avoid fasting if your blood sugar is unstable, if you are pregnant or if you are breastfeeding. The Mediterranean diet is based on the traditional diet found in Mediterranean countries and is currently the most recommended diet by food and nutrition professionals. It focuses on vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, lean protein and olive oil. This low-salt diet is also beneficial for heart and brain health. This diet's focus on choosing whole plant-based foods over highly processed junk foods or fast foods may make you more likely to stick with it. By default, if you're eating healthier foods that are higher in fiber and protein and eating less saturated fat and sugar, you will likely eat fewer calories and lose weight. Remember, your diet should read like a sustainable pattern of healthy eating, not a shortcut to drastic weight loss. It's also recommended to incorporate regular exercise into your weight loss plan. <laughs> okay, so the in thing now is, is weight loss. I tell you, a lot of people are trying to lose weight. I'm not, I'm not going to say I am one of them or I'm not one of them, but a lot of people. I'm going to say if I'm one of them or not, but a lot of people are trying to lose weight now. It's like the trend out there. So for those who cannot lose as much as they want, they're always wearing... <laughs> Someone said I've been trying to lose weight since forever. Vivian, there is God though. <laughs> okay, for those who are struggling to, to lose weight and really can't get away with it, they wear the whole waist uh, clincher. Or the, so this thing is, is a real deal. And um, we just saw um, a feature on different kinds of diets out there, the vegan, the keto. As a, as a, um, an authority in this field, <laughs> do you agree with all of those diets? Is there something that is lacking or missing? Well, um, <laughs> to begin with, those are all diets that people actually approach when they want to try weight loss. There are lots more mm -hmm. diets out there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, initially the major reason why people want to want to go on a diet this day is because they want to lose weight it's become a lot popular hmm. and i think it has something to do with social media you know hmm. how perceptions that people put out there who is fat what body type is admirable you know people wearing the body censure and mm -hmm, the westerners mm -hmm. and all that their focus then is actually on the abdominals mm. they're trying to firm up the abdomen maybe after childbirth or there's a little bit of, of uh, abdominal obesity going on there you know so and you, if you ask those people they'll tell you i just want to lose weight on my abdominal region i don't want that yeah and i wonder how you is can it lose it just there <laughs> without having to affect other places mm. maybe maybe that person simply needs to get 
get some physical activity, mm -hmm. you know, that is targeted on that particular part of the body. And because of laziness, they're jumping from one diet to the other without even knowing if it is mm -hmm. suitable for them. Now, all the diet that, that, that have just been featured in the documentary, the Atkins, the Kato, and all that, all of them are focusing on weight loss. Loss, yeah. You know, but the truth is that this is without, you know, putting down any of this diet. Mm -hmm. The truth is that if you want to lose weight, all you need to do is to be able to create that calorie deficit. Hmm. Mm. So you can actually eat every food, every food, every food from every food group without, you know, compromising your weight and still be able to lose weight. Hmm. And most of these diets that are there, we call them, you know, yo-yo dieting and hmm. all that. Why most of them are being criticized by our professional colleagues, mm -hmm. and even me in most cases, <laughs> is because they will skip out some food groups mm. and focus on just one or two or just a few. Mm. So you discover that when people eventually get on these diet programs and mm. they lose weight and they stay on it, on the long run, they will come down with something else. Wow. Maybe nutrient deficiencies. Mm. Maybe, yeah. you know, For instance, the ketogenic diet, diet has been known to effect especially for children with epilepsy mm -hmm. and this diet and many other ones are safer used in a clinical setting where participants are well monitored and usually not for a long period of time mm. you know so we normally say that moderation is a spice of life if you know that you have um you have um, the habit of doing a particular food group, maybe eating a lot of fries, mm. that means you're taking a lot mm. of fat. Mm. And when you do a lot of the, those frying, that is unhealthy because the more you pass heat on the oils from frying, they are becoming hydrogenated and a lot of free radicals will run through your system. Yeah. And, it, you know, it is all all the recipe we need for the body to pack up, mm. you know. So what people need to do is to be able to embrace the concept of moderation. If you are struggling, get an expert help, get guidance. Mm. You'll be able to still lose weight. So like I said, the major thing is to create calorie deficits. Deficit. And an easiest way to do that is mm -hmm. to be able to control your portion. Okay, okay, but, um, well, even there's this, um, there's a lot of, um, like I've done research, there's a lot of um, materials out there talking about, um, if you want to lose weight, um, there's so many things you need to consider. For one, your body type, your okay. body structure. So but how true is this? Because you just said um, calorie deficits. Just okay. Um, mm -hmm. Does that rule work for every body shape or every body type? It or? works for everyone to be able to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Now, if an individual wants to lose weight, you need to first of all, it's like you want to travel mm -hmm. to, a, to the next city. You have to first of all find out how long, what's the distance, how long will it, how many hours are you going to be on the road? Are you supposed to, are you going to fly or are you going to take, go by road? Mm -hmm. You know, you, how, how much luggage should you carry and all that? So what I'm trying to say is that people need to first of all understand where am I right now? Mm -hmm. What am I weighing? What am I supposed to weigh? Don't just, I'm losing weight. Mm -hmm. To what weight are you going to? What is, where is your destination? So you need to have the, your destination in mind. In mind. Before you start that journey, okay. then while you're on the journey, you should be able to know, okay, what should I, how should I go on this journey, this journey bus? Should mm -hmm. I fly? Should I okay. walk? So what kind of diet regimen will work best for you? That it works for you. Doesn't mean it will work for me. It work for me. Yeah. So that is why getting that expert help. It's, well, it's important. You know. okay. Well, we're just talking about weight loss and then we have diets for other purposes too. Like exactly. you mentioned earlier, when yes. you're treating an illness, like we know mm -hmm. diabetic mm -hmm. patients don't mm -hmm. just get to eat anything. Why Why is this important well, for just for, people treating certain illnesses? No, don't say it doesn't get to eat anything. Okay. Rather say it doesn't get to eat, should not be eating unhealthy. You know, for someone that has... Um, family members or a family member with diabetes, maybe your parents have mm -hmm. diabetes. It mm -hmm. means that the offspring in that family should start early to, you know, uh, I don't want to say go on a diet, to start early to, you know, watch what they eat so I'll be able to prove. I've been to you because, you know, I said anything and you said I shouldn't just say anything, but I've heard, <laughs> no, I've heard um, um, diabetic patients shouldn't like eat um, fried 
a lot of fried um, of course they shouldn't food. eat that hey, but me, you know I'm not the, the, no the concept i want so to the concept i want i need to twat is okay. is the concept of diabetic food diabetic rice okay diabetic okay. this okay. diabetic okay. that those things are just sales gimmick okay they want to sell that product okay don't tell me it's diabetic right there is still sugar in, in it. it okay you should be able to tell this person you need to be on a high fat food high high uh, fiber food mm. that is low glycemic mm. in nature and of course low fat because fat is also something that can affect the body insulin response mm. so you shouldn't get a diabetic patient eating fries and cooking with so much of oil that okay. can compromise okay. their insulin sensitivity of which by the way for a normal person you really like a person without that illness really shouldn't eat so much so, of fries so of course moderation yes sure. yes so you know so you were you, your question earlier was yes. the kind of diet yes. people go on to treat illnesses, illnesses for yeah. example somebody that has hypertension should mm. be on a low salt diet hmm low salt diet doesn't just imply stop eating salt there are other places other things we eat where salt is also being hidden mm. in our bullion cubes our seasoning cubes they have salt in them our processed foods have salt is a preservative so in most processed things you see salt is hidden in them so if you're going on a low salt diet you should be able to you know sit down with your nutritionist or your dietitian map out the things mm. you eat and they'll be able to point to you this is where you find salt salt okay. is in this one okay. then mm -hmm. they'll be able to tell you you know what is your safe limit all right low salt does not mean no salt, no salt. okay mm. all right we'll come back there's still one more aspect of dieting which is dieting for weight gain that we're still going to talk about <laughs> but um another feature put together by capsi um talks about dieting for weight gain gaining weight can be as difficult as losing it studies have shown that being underweight has to do with one not eating enough healthy food with key nutrients to help fuel your body this can cause malnutrition which will affect your health in different ways however adding certain foods to your diet can make one gain weight in a healthy and more effective way here are some recommendations for those looking to put in some extra weight first see a professional preferable a dietitian for proper guideline smoothies can be a highly nutritious and quick way to gain weight preferably make your own smoothie it gives you full control over the flavor and nutrient content. Milk has been used as a weight gainer over some time now. It provides a good balance of protein, carbs, and fat and is a good source of calcium, as well as other vitamins and minerals. Studies have found that milk and casein combined can lead to greater mass gain. Drink one or two glasses of whole milk with a snack or a meal for an easy morning protein boost. Whole grain breads are another good carb source to help you gain weight. You can make some very simple, high calorie and well balanced meals by combining bread with protein sources such as eggs, meat and cheese. Eating potatoes and other starchy foods such as quinoa, oats, corn and legumes are very easy and cost effective way to gain weight. Not only do these foods help you gain weight, they also boost your glycogen stores. Like red meat, Salmon and oily fish are excellent sources of protein and important healthy fats. They help offer numerous benefits for your health and help fight diseases. You can prepare salmon in a variety of ways, such as steamed, smoked, grilled, baked, or poached. Red meat is one of the best natural sources of dietary creatine. It is a great source of protein, though it provides more calories, which can help you gain weight. One of the best known fatty beef dishes is brisket. Unlike other whole fruits, avocados are loaded with healthy fats. Therefore, it is a great food to help you gain weight. Just one large avocado provides around 332 calories, 29 grams of fat, and 14 grams of fiber. Try adding avocado to your main meals and other dishes such as omelette or sandwiches. Nuts and butters are perfect choices if you are looking to gain weight. Just one small handful of raw almonds contains 170 calories, 6 grams of protein, 4 grams of fiber, and 15 grams of healthy fat. Since nuts are very calorie dense, just two handfuls per day with a meal or as a snack can quickly add hundreds of calories. You can add nuts, butters to a variety of snacks or dishes. Eggs are one of the healthiest muscle building foods on the planet. They provide a great combination of high quality protein and healthy fat. 
a large raw egg contains about 74 calories. It is very important to a whole it is very important to eat a whole egg as long as you don't have any intolerance to egg. There is no limit to your egg consumption. Building a healthy body is no man's feat. It takes extra and conscious effort. Hi, thank you very much, Kafsi. That was well put together. Well, I have another guest, another doctor that has joined us on set, and his name is Dr. Udochi Majesty Odikamwa. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank for you for me. taking our time thank to you. join us. Well, thank he's a psychologist you. and a pastor. Mm. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Well, we've been talking dieting, mm. and um, we've um, established a lot of my doctor friend here has told us a lot about diets and we've talked about the different types of diets and all of them. We just saw a feature now hmm. on dieting for weight gain. I know you've been itching to say one or two things. Yes, yeah, interestingly, you okay. we rarely see people that okay. want to. They are there mm -hmm. and they don't really come out because when they do, we see those people that are obese, we shut them up. What do you want to gain weight for? You know, and we are trying to lose weight. They are, you know, so it's kind of they they're in some way but shamed. Hmm. Somehow they are they are sidelined. They are meant to keep mute, but they need to gain weight because looking at hmm. their their body mass index or whatever that is going on with them. Because by the time they are of that low weight, discover they might have other issues. Some of them are for the females may not be hmm. menstruating. So many things could be going on wrong with them. So uh, for them to gain weight, of course, is uh, the other flip side: increased calories. How? You know, mm. I know. So I, uh, increasing calorie doesn't mean eating food meant for 10 people at a sitting. Okay. You might just eat the portion that is right for you, but increase the frequency at which we eat, at, at which the, uh, he or she eats. And by the time it adds up at the end of the day, see the person. You know, some of the things it. you said has made me want to come up with a, a series of questions for <laughs> you. But mm. I know you're a psychologist, but I know you are also a doctor, so you definitely have input on this. You know, you're saying, um, you talked about body shaming. We're definitely getting down okay. to that part, you know, later on. But I want to say something. There was a time in my life I was really desperately trying to add weight. I'm not one of those people that, you know... What, like what inspired that decision for you? Um, because I just felt I was too skinny. I was bony and lanky. Like, when I was, when I did, um, I did a little bit of theater arts, mm -hmm. whenever I was dancing and then you watch me on stage, it would be as if my bones were about to... Mm. <laughs> fall apart and then you know as a girl now you want you know some parts of your body to be well pronounced so mm -hmm. i guess a lot of that uh pressure but i really didn't need to because now we're trying to lose that weight <laughs> but here's what i'm saying there are lots of people who like you said can eat a whole pot you just be angry mm -hmm. they're just by your side this person will finish one loaf of bread okay. finish a plate of rice drink coke down juice you just you just eat Five spoons of rice. <laughs> you have to go and walk out hard in the gym. Don't be deceived by those people. There's something about different body metabolisms. Because yeah, well, I wanted to ask a question. Theirs might be really high condition, you know, and yours might be slower than theirs. So you're looking at your body metabolism, your activity mm. level, and of course your age. So I was going to ask you. Actually, that question was meant for you, but then you know. Is there, is there, a, okay, she said um, the metabolic um, mm. rate uh, speeds up and all of that, but what do you have to say about that? Um, thank you very much. Yes, sir. This is a very good time to put people right, you know. Uh, this has um, increased the level of depression in our society. And mm. the, when people are depressed because of uh, body shame, mm. uh, most times uh, they go into what you call abstract depression. Mm. Uh, abstract depression is a type of depression that you can't actually lay hold on something that is making you depressed. And some of these things are side talks of body shaming, you know. Uh, somebody skinny does not make you inferior. Mm. In psychology, there's what you call enact ability. You know, I double N A T E, mm. enact ability. And every human being is modeled with a spectacular skeleton. Mm. Uh, so your own may be big, mine may be medium, medium the mm. other one may be smaller. But what we advocate in the psychological world is that just be proud of whom you are. Exactly. Mm. Right. Be proud of your body shape. 
be proud of your physique or whatever and all that because mm. God, you know, there is this common saying that say all things rise wonderful and beautiful, God, small, yeah. but the Lord God made them all. Mm. So God who made the bird made the eagle. And so people should not have that psychological depression mm. or go into what we call mental psychosis by okay. trying to analyze their own ability by a side talk of, uh, you know, body shaming or something. And so those things shouldn't, uh, to us as psychologists, I shouldn't depress people at all hmm. because you have ability. Now, let me bring from the angle of uh, geology and psychology. They have a, a, a similarity. Mm -hmm. Now, you look at the person of David and look at the person of Goliath. Mm -hmm. Now, this young man did not look at his body structure before he faced the big man, mm -hmm. but he looked at his innate ability to bring down this man. And, you know, from the biblical holy book point of view uh, this man did not bring down just goliath because god's grace was upon him but he brought him down because he had an innate ability hmm. he had the tactical skill hmm. to bring him down so what i'm saying is that in psychology this has um in no small measure made lots of people hmm. you know to go down committing suicide and um having inferiority complex and uh, becoming society nuisance hmm. because they feel that they are nobody Okay. Um, I've heard people make statements like um, it runs in my family. Yes. That's why I'm, I'm fat. Is there, is there a semblance of truth to that? Oh, yes, there is. Is hereditary? Of course is it, it is. Um, is. It's been genetic. obvious. Is it genetic? Of yeah. course it is. It is. Uh, there are genetic factors. There are environmental factors. There are dietary factors. Okay. Uh, you talk about genetic factors, which you just mentioned right okay. now. There are so many people, you know, in their family, they are very skinny, but mm. very tall. It runs in the gene of everyone. And but those people, you cannot just sidetrack them okay. and looking at the macho man and say the macho man is stronger than them. No. Hmm. No. You know, in psychology, there is a part we call physiology. Hmm. Your physiognomy. You study about physique of people now. Right. So you don't equate people's ability both in strength hmm. and in mental capacity hmm. by their body structure. You don't. But when people out there, that's why this program is very, very imperative for people to listen because mm. a lot of people, as I said, have gone into depression about this. Mm. Now, your ability is here. And it's in your strength, not on your physique. Mm. Now, there are people you look at, they are very skinny, but they can bring down a man big as this upset. Mm -hmm. They bring the man down. So that shows you that it's not from your body. After all, there are so many people also who are very big, nice. but just do a little jog in their panties. Okay. <laughs> so what we are saying in essence is that it runs in families. Mm -hmm. It's a genetic thing, and most times it could be dietary things. Yeah. In psychology, before you do, I want to say there is this one that is called um, uh, Anusha uh, Navosa. Hmm. Uh, it's a it's a yes, it's a situation whereby you know, people eat and all that, eat, 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 eat. Eating destructions. Because and I was going to ask you that yeah. question. Like, mm. why do people overeat? Why do people overeat? What's, you know, you mentioned, um, you mentioned, um, a of, okay. what goes on, you know, in their, in their head? Why do they overeat? Depression. When someone is depressed, he wants to, he or she wants to see, there is what we call in psychology, coping mechanisms. Yeah. yeah. He just wants to cope. There are some people that will tell you, I just want to go away from my house. I want to travel out. I want to drink. I want to socialize and all that. Because they are tensed up. And this is the reason why in psychology, you don't just approach people by the first action they display. Mm. Just go to the root cause of Do what has caused that. Out. So when they are mm -hmm. overeating, you look at what is happening to them. It may be there is a, a, a synonymous Something one, apart from the one I mentioned, is called a bulimia. Hmm. You know, but, Navosa, yes, Navosa, yeah. you know, so they go hand in hand. You see, people over eating, they can, you know, finish a basin of rice and all that. All right, a lot of people, yeah. but they um, better have to better yeah, yeah, something like that. A lot of people that are mm. overweight um, are being called lots of names, fat mm. soul, or you know, um, you're just fat. Some people just tell them you're fat, you're too big, mm. don't lose weight. You're, you know, a lot of um, insensitive comments out there. How does this affect their self esteem? It does affect in a very long way. And like I said, 
they can take charge of themselves. And how can they boost? How can they, you know, boost up their self-esteem? How can they, 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 they you know? They, they, they can even form what we call social identity. Okay. Right. If you are fat and fat, this person is fat and all that, all of you can come in and make a group. Okay. It's a psychological way of uh, ventilating, you know, out any stress somebody might have put out of you there because you are too fat. I believe being okay. too fat is just a, a, a metaphoric statement. Now, being healthy is different from being too exactly. fat. There yeah. are people who are very fat, but they are very mm. healthy. Mm. There are people who are also fat, but they are obese. Mm. And so these are different ball games right now. All so right. we look at fat, we look at being healthy. Okay, okay. Well, apart from, you know, trying to lose a lot of weight and um, or trying to yeah. gain, gain weight, a lot of people have developed... Um, dangerous eating disorders mm. and before we come back to talk about this um, just take a feature put together by Sam Ben on dangerous eating disorders food is one thing that makes us happy it is one of the major factors for staying alive and healthy but when not balanced eating in excess or in inadequate quantity consistently it becomes a dangerous eating disorder Dangerous eating habits or eating disorder, it's an abnormal eating uh, habit that is characterized by a lot of things. It could be illnesses, it could be behavioral factors, it could be emotional factors. Uh, but one thing is certain, it has a little way of affecting or more affecting the individual's well-being. That is what it's referred to as eating disorders. Many of these eating disorders mostly come as a result of trying to lose weight, eat pure or right, or trying to correct something that we feel we have done wrong as it pertains our eating habits. Anorexia nervosa has to do with um, being afraid of gaining weight. A lot of people who are afraid of, you know, gaining so much weight and at the extent of that they want to lose weight and in the course of losing weight they limit themselves they say they want to do the limitation of calories and when they do that they end up using the wrong methods to achieve that now they do not know what these calories themselves they are limiting are now if everybody's just seeing calories that it's all about the carbohydrate factor why the ca calories is not just about carbohydrate it's majorly about it's a unit of the energy every food you consume contains energy it's either you're not getting energy from your foods or the foods are helping the body to fight against diseases for the bulimians or the bulimics what they do is they have loss of control over what they eat in the sense that as they are they are so concerned about restricting their diet a lot of them are on their own they just give themselves specialized diet they want to do some of them want to do keto some of them want to do low fat some of them want to do fruit diet they just go on restricting and at the end of the day they end up skipping their breakfast skipping their meals they skip a particular meal in a day they may end up skipping that and it doubles itself and at that point where the body is not taking what it requires for a particular meal the energy stores become limited and the expenditure become higher because the body is spending more than it should you know use the body is requiring more of that food back so those bulimics what they now do is when they try to restrict themselves from some certain particular food or restrict themselves from eating in a day they double up and that is very harmful to their health why those they now engage in what they call binging which is down to the third one which is common binging is eating you know so much due to you know that can be caused by a lot of emotions it's majorly um, emotion controlled like psychologically controlled by behavioral you know something can come up a lot of things you know how we are seeing ourselves in a society there's so much stress there's so much you know everybody we are all working on clothes and we don't know people who are happy people who are not happy the society is we are just being overburdened with so many things on our heads and in such a situation you can end up either you're eating so much or you're taking in less of what you should eat and at the end of the day it causes more harm than good another is diabulimia an eating disorder that people with type 1 diabetes can develop it is when someone reduces or skips their insulin dosage in order to lose weight this is very dangerous symptoms include constant bouts of nausea and or vomiting persistent thirst and frequent urination frequent bladder and or yeast infection amongst others when one is diagnosed 
What are the ways of treatment? The, the most important thing is to understand if as individuals, you know you have an eating disorder. A lot of people do not know they have eating disorder, even as I, I am as an individual. How much of yourself or your body do you know? If you are able to listen to yourself and listen to your body, where you take so much control of yourself, that is the first step, which is you're trying to correct that uh, um, um, poor mental well-being. And once you've done that, you know, once the brain is set in order, that's where the mind is, every other thing set takes place. Once you've done that, you check what is really causing this thing. Could it be psychological? Could it be emotional? You start correcting those things. Is it through dieting? Is it through, you know, know the particular exercise that suits you. Not you want to just do strenuous exercise and at the end of the day, it, it is bringing you down back to what you're trying to avoid. Then if it's health conditions, most times it happens, then you know what to do. Some drugs can inhibit such. A lot of drugs have made a lot of people have a lot of changes in their eating um, habits and causing eating disorders for them. Early diagnosis is always necessary with disorders like this. And if you've been diagnosed, stop the self-denial. Visit either your dietitian or psychologist today. Get treated and start eating well. Thank you very much, Semben. We're going to let our psychologist do justice to that. And um, But first, I have some questions here that came in from some of our viewers, and I just would like to read some of them out. Um, this person said, my 17-year-old friend is too fat. What should I, what should he take to reduce in size and weight? I think that's going to you. Um, please, Mark, can I have Mrs. Choma's official contact? Um, I've been in need of a dietitian. Okay, we'll, we'll get back to you. <laughs> my director said she's married. <laughs> okay, someone said, what do I need to do in order to lose weight? Um, another person asks, what good, what food is good when you're on your period? What food is good to eat when you're on your period? Mm. Then, um, I don't, if you're putting all these questions together, I'm, so you I'm answer them at, at once. Um, one is talking about fat, re, um, to reduce weight. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Another one is talking about, um, um, food to eat on period. Mm -hmm. And I was asking, is red meat good for all ages? Mm. Is it good for all ages? Then, um... If I want to add weight, my good afternoon. My name is Ekpereamaka Ekpe from Anambra State. Okay, thank you very much. We see your message. Please, if I want to add weight, what will I do or take? So basically, add weight, lose, lose weight, weight, red meat, good or not. Okay. And then we'll, okay, um, will you go first? Then we come back and wrap up um, eating disorders. Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, the person that is asking about her 17 year old friend yeah. um i the first thing that came to my mind was this your 17 year old friend did he is he asking for help too mm. or are you the one requesting for help on his account yeah. because i don't want us to match body shaming and you you know mm. thinking he's overweight where he thinks that there is no problem mm. because if you, if you go and um maybe get a diet plan or something and give to someone that clearly things I'm okay the way I am. What are you trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. So in the first place, the person needs to understand. That's why I said you need to be able to say, this is where I am and this is mm -hmm. not supposed to be. How do I get there? Then get an expert help. To be able to lose weight, the bottom line is create a calorie deficit. Mm -hmm. If you have a dietitian around you or a nutritionist that is experienced in that aspect, they should be able to provide you with guidance, mm. you know, to achieve that. You know, the person will look at the things you eat, find out about. There are other things too around weight gain. This person could be gaining weight because either he or she doesn't sleep well, mm. or he or she have some psychological mm. matters mm. around mm. him that is making him keep on eating and eating. Like most people, most people during this COVID mm. uh, pandemic, during the lockdown, all that said, they gain a lot of weight mm. because they weren't moving. No, no physical exercise. activity. Mm, yeah. They are all at home from the office, they're from the table desk where they're walking mm. down to the fridge, to the kitchen. They keep eating the room and, and eating sleeping. and eating and all that. So so you, the person should be able to, you know, get the help of any nutritionist okay. around him to be able to and plan and develop the structure, a menu plan Maybe? that will work for him. Okay. okay. There is no one size that fits, fits all. all. And to add weight, it's the other mm. way around. Increase calorie intake. And then possibly might have to also increase frequency. And mm. for you to be able to increase 
you know, increase calorie intake means your frequency of eating will also have to increase mm. because you can't do so much volume at a point. Okay. All right. And then red meat. Now, uh, let me take the aspect of what, do, what to eat during the period. During, during, mm -hmm. during the mm -hmm. menstrual period, women have different experiences. Some have very heavy blood flow. Mm -hmm. That should be a time to, for you to know you have to do a lot of proteins and vegetables mm. to keep on replenishing your iron stores and all of that. Then some might also need some, you know, hot, you know, drinks you know, hot soups and all that mm. to help. It helps with the cramps and all that okay. to provide some mm. relief and all of that. Okay. And uh, it's not time for you to go taking fizzy drinks, mm. sugary things mm. and all that because on the long run, it doesn't have, it have its own effect okay. Okay. on the outcome or how comfortable you get to be during your period. Now for red meat, well, I'm not going to say it's okay for all age Ages. groups. All I, all I preach is the concept of moderation mm. and at the same time moderation means you shouldn't go eat one large volume mm -hmm. as as much as possible it's <laughs> most of your food let them come from plants all right Imagine all right my director is really is really on me <laughs> me too okay. sorry director. we're running out of time yeah <laughs> thank you very much it's a bit like pad this last question yeah. pad it up with a lot of questions in one the feature we just watched about eating disorder um is really deep and then we started talking about body shaming mm. earlier. We know that some of the reasons why these people um, get into cases like that is one of the reasons is body shaming mm. or um, to meet up with work perception or out there. perception of people. And how can this? How dangerous is this thing? Because I don't know if people are really aware how dangerous this eating disorders are. And you know, what should they do? What should they do? Yeah. You know, to nip it in the bud. You mean the eating disorder? People who have issues like, yes, people who have issues like this. With, you know, the body shaming obviously led to, for some, mm -hmm. body shaming led to that. And for some, they have to meet up like models, mm -hmm. for instance. You have to be a particular shape. You have to be, you know, they, they, they give you statistics. Exactly. There is this thing we call a kind of a negative psychosocial mentality of people that... Uh, I have less than two minutes yes, to that, run up the show, my, my director. With this, uh, body shaming <laughs> and all that. But what they have to do is to just avoid peer pressure. Thank you. Peer pressure and um, negative socialization. Social that, media. Uh, yes, try to, mm -hmm, social media mm -hmm, and all that, mm -hmm. try to push them to the wall and say, get fat and all that. Yeah. Because some of the things you eat to try to cushion the effects of uh, psychosis yeah, is uh, going to harm your system. Your liver is in trouble. Your kidney is in trouble. Mm. Your body metabolism is going to down zero. And you should just be careful. Mm. Take a lot of water. Be whom you are. Just be proud of yourself, and uh, off okay. you go higher. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm just. I'm going to. I'm going to hold on to that. Be who you are. Okay. Try not to put yourself under whatever kind of pressure. At the end of the day, you have to be healthy. And our dietitian here has established the fact that you have to eat from the different classes of food to have a healthy meal. And the key is moderation. She keeps emphasizing that. You can eat what you want to eat, but moderation is key. Try not to put yourself under pressure to um, get to the point where you have to eat or uh, starve yourself just because you want to achieve a particular weight. Well, it's been interesting having you um, both on set today. So and much. I must say, I have learned a lot. Taking some you tips that us. I'm going to use for myself. Oh. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure yeah. having both of you. Well, that's how far we can go on the show today. Thank you so much for staying with us till the very end. See you same time, same station next week. Mm -hmm.